Hello and welcome to News Now. I am Fidelia Agoncha. Reactions have trailed the INEC's decision to resume collation of election results in Rivers and Bauchi State, respectively. Bauchi State Governor Mohamed Abubakar has rejected the decision of the electoral body, saying he will challenge it in court. Speaking to State House correspondents after a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari in Abuja, Abubakar described the move as illegal. The issues uh, surrounding the inconclusive elections. Uh, the returning officer for Bauchi State uh, at the end of uh, coalition rejected the results of Tafa Balewa local government and then 36 other units spread around 15 local governments of Bauchi State and ordered a rerun. Uh, surprisingly, we woke up one morning and INE came up with uh, a procedure that is not known to law because where a returning officer has made a declaration, only an election petitions tribu tribunal can reverse that. But INEC is attempting to reverse itself uh, in the case of uh, Bauchi. And uh, uh, when one just opposes uh, that of Bauchi and other uh, states with inconclusive election, one uh, is wonders why uh, that thing is happening only in Bauchi state. The returning officer is the final uh, or uh, arbiter with respect to scores in election and declaration of uh, results. And where he makes a declaration, no power can reverse that declaration but a duly constituted court of the land. I am uh, pursuing the legal angle and I briefed him and he emphasized on uh, that legal angle that that is the best uh, approach. Also reacting to this decision of the electoral body is the All Progressives Congress APC. The party, through its spokesperson, Larry Isao Nilu, has rejected the move, describing it as a plot to rig the election in favor of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. INEC had declared governorship elections in Bauchi, Benue, Kanu, Sokoto, Adamawa and Plateau State inconclusive, fixing March 23rd for supplementary elections. It had also suspended the coalition of resorts in River State due to violence, but over the weekend, the electoral body made a U-turn, saying it would continue the coalition of resorts in Bauchi State instead of conducting a fresh election. It also said it would resume coalition of resorts in River State. Meanwhile, the presidency says it would not manipulate the independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to favor the APC in the supplementary elections to be conducted in five states. In a statement by presidential spokesperson Garba Shehu, the federal government noted that INEC is fully in charge of electoral matters in the country. The statement added that the presidency would neither interfere with the process nor change results in favor of the ruling APC. Shehu also warned political leaders to desist from making inflammatory statements capable of inciting violence ahead of the supplementary elections. Our chairman of the Nigeria Governors Forum and Zamfara State Governor Ablaziz Yari is insisting that direct primaries is the best way to select a flag bearer for elections in any political party. Well, this is despite the scandal that rocked the Zamfara chapter of the All Progressives Congress ahead of the 2019 elections. The party had been disqualified for not conducting valid primary elections and was reinstated just 48 hours to the polls. Yari speaking to State House correspondents in Abuja says it was just a mere misunderstanding that was not properly managed. Being conducting the direct primaries, I have said it that I choose if my colleagues can accept the direct primary, the most simplest primaries that can lead to the involvement of each and every member of the party. In my own state, in my own case, we have only seven people contesting or eight. So therefore, if, if I can manage outside my state, 18. So in my state, I think I can manage 10 or 9 or whichever number. Because I'm on ground since 2000, 1999 to date on this system. So and I know how it works from the party system, party secretary, party chairman, house representative, and the governor two times. So I think if I can use the good office and the good experience, I can be able to manage what is going to happen in APC. But unfortunately, there are so many misunderstandings between down there and down here where we are. In Abuja, in the party, everyone is thinking otherwise, and so forth and so forth. But in the end, 
we concluded, we ended in the court, and court has given the verdict and uh, complied by the INEC. Though, it's a kind of uh, uh, late hours, but at least, whatever you're going to do, you have to be with your grassroots people. If you are with them, definitely everything will work on well. Well, another building has collapsed in Lagos Island during the ongoing demolition in the area. The building located at Egerton Square, Okari, collapsed on Monday afternoon, trapping some persons. Details about the collapse, which comes less than a week after the Itafaji collapse that claimed 20 lives are sketchy, but the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency confirmed it through its official Twitter account. According to La Sena, the building is one of those marked by Lagos State for demolition. Well, moving on, the socio-economic rights and accountability project SERAP has called for a probe into the circumstances surrounding the separate building collapse incidents in Lagos and Oyo State last week. In a statement by its deputy director, Kolawale Oludare, SERAP urged the government in both states to take immediate steps to investigate the incident with a view to bringing to justice complicit developers and contractors. It also urged the states to publicly apologize to the victims, their families and Nigerians, and also provide the affected families with immediate remedies. The group adds that it is ready to offer free legal services to affected families so as to ensure that justice is done. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers Lagos Chapter has pledged to cooperate with Lagos State Government in ensuring proper inspection of buildings across the state, particularly in Lagos Island. The chairman of the body, Lola Adetano, at a press conference in Lagos, revealed that the engineer in charge of the collapsed building in Itafaji area of Lagos Island was not their member. Adetano also promised that the body will champion the movement against illegal and substandard buildings in Lagos State. We have all areas where we can help ourselves to get better. The government has done their part, really. The institutions are all there. We're looking into the possibility of ensuring that no collapse again. They're going to be looking at all this stuff. That's why I said we're partnering with Lagos State Material Test Lab and Lagos State Building Control Agency, LAPCA, to start looking all over around this, especially the Lagos Islands the Yaba areas, the areas that we know that we have buildings. Like buildings usually are designed for a year of about 50 years lifespan, which means within that period, nothing should happen. And when it's closing close to that period, you come in and do some structural analysis and investigation and make your building proper. So we're not just sitting down. That's what we're saying. Our institution, and I'm sure the Nigerian Society of Engineers and it's the engineering body as a whole, are already looking into how to solve this problem. We have the Council of Registered in the current, we are looking at the legislative, so which laws should be passed to make sure that we can handle and come into this trend. It's really about synergy. We need to work together. We have a lot, of, we have capable engineers in Nigeria that are trained and that have authorities over these issues. And everybody is like, why are they not talking to us? Why have we left the quack to take over? We're looking at even, Talking to institutions, we're, we're already getting across to the Association of, um, of Developers so that we can have a meeting with them, tell them, look at their process, look at how we can work with them. You know, so we're looking at also working with the government in every way possible to make sure that collapse of building is put to a halt. We don't want to hear about it again, but it's going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. It's not something that is going to stop like we said it today to stop right now. But we have started the process and we're sure that it's ongoing. The Lagos State Government has begun the demolition of buildings that failed the integrity test in the Itafaji area of Lagos Island. The demolition is coming after the collapse of a three story building on Mercy Street, which killed 20 people and left many others injured. Only Adekunle has more. Clustered buildings like these. Some of them unapproved are familiar sites in Lagos Island. Residents of these high-rise buildings usually show little or no concern for the dilapidated state of the houses, so long as it still provides them some form of shelter. This is what is left of a three-story building on Massey Street, Itafaji, Lagos Island, which collapsed on Wednesday, killing 20 people, most of them children. 
The incident has prompted the state government to commence the demolition of other substandard buildings in the area. In Ujogiwa, a certain building that has been marked for demolition since 2017 is just being brought down by the Lagos State Building Control Agency nearly two years after. But why is the government just carrying out this action after one of the buildings has claimed so many lives? We have been giving adequate notices, demolition, contravention notice, letters to carry out the NTD, non-destructive tests, foundation probing, series of notices. And that is why we've not been able to remove it for a long time. It's been there for over a year. And you can see people around are actually happy that we are removing. Some residents in the area, however, disagree. The building was marked so, for the past 10 years, but during the period of a uh, uh, former governor of Lagos State, Olush, Olush, I think, uh, Raji Fashola, when he came around this place, for that, that fateful Friday, he, he came to worship at the mosque. So when he was going to so this building in this condition, I'm instantly given instruction to put it to down. But being the owner, is just a, it's a former politician too. He goes, he, he, go, he goes about it, and they brought a vibrator. They sell the house and said the house is in good condition. And that was why this building is still up to this day. In Evans Street, about 200 meters to Massey, some buildings are also being demolished. But some of these occupants have been reacting to these simultaneous demolitions by the government. There was no any notice before. But it was the day before yesterday, they came and taped the building round. And unfortunately, yesterday morning, they came and demolished some windows there. So, and for now, if that, there is an, a notice before the demolition, we'll have now decide where to go. But now, there is nowhere we can now go now. This is not the first time building collapse will occur in Lagos Island. But to avoid a recurrence, the Lagos state government has already marked out nearly 150 buildings for demolition to ensure the safety of lives and properties. However, the next challenge for the government is how to cater for the residents of these affected buildings who say they have nowhere to go to. Unyi Adekunle, TV360, Nigeria. A federal high court sitting in Lagos State has adjourned to April 17. The hearing of three pending applications filed by the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Paul Lusoro. Lusoro, among others, is seeking for an order of the court directing the EFCC to serve on him a summarized witness statement of those listed to give evidence in the matter. In the proof of evidence, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission had listed five senior advocates of Nigeria, among others, to testify in the matter. The application filed by Mike Ozokame is also asking the court to set aside the bench warrant issued against four Aquaibom government officials arraigned alongside the NBA president. The defendants are standing trial for conspiracy and conversion of an alleged 1.4 billion naira said to be property of the Aquaibom state government. They have all denied the charges. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 52 new cases of Lassa fever between March 4 and March 10, 2019. In its weekly report, the NCDC stated that a total of 1,752 suspected cases had been reported across 21 states, including the FCT, as of March 10. The latest cases were reported from eight states, which include Edo, Ondo, Eboni, Bauchi, Nasarawa, Klaatu, Taraba, and Delta. Also, 11 deaths were reported for the same week in, en in Edo, Ondo, Eboni, and Nasarawa state, bringing the death toll of the disease since the outbreak began this year to 110. This reported surge in the number of confirmed cases is coming some weeks after the NCDC's claim that there has been a gradual decline in the outbreak since inception. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM says there is no exemption on biometric verification for all candidates of the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME. The Registrar of the Board, Ishak Oloyede, 
revealed this in Abuja at a meeting of critical stakeholders on strategic planning and preparations of the 2019 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. According to Ishak, biometric verification will be the only mode of admittance of candidates into JAM examination centers nationwide, saying that examination officials must adhere strictly to the rules. You know that this year, INEX said no biometric verification, no voting, because they know what people are doing. We have suffered it for at least the last three years. Mm. And this year, we appeal to everybody, chief examiner, no discretion about it. Anybody who, has, who cannot be verified on the biometric cannot write our exam. We have known what people are doing. Please, any candidate can, that cannot be verified must not be allowed to take the examination under any guise. VVM is the only form of attendance register. There is no attendance register, no biometric verification, no examination. Meanwhile, the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, has been explaining the disbursement of funds to states for provision of needed facilities in public primary and junior secondary schools in the country. The Commission says it has disbursed a total sum of 360 billion naira to states across the country in the past six years. The Executive Secretary of UBEC, Hamid Baboyi, made us known while briefing journalists in Abuja on the achievements of the Commission. Now, I just want to tell you that in the six years preceding this administration, a total of 360 billion was paid through UBEC to the states. And within the last four years of this administration, the federal government has paid something that is proportionately more than what was paid in the six years, if you take the average of the years. In 2015, matching grant and non-conditional grants amounted to 68 billion. 400 million going to 15 states. In 2016, disbursement was to 29 states and the FCT, and it amounted to 77 billion. In 2017, disbursement was 95 billion to 24 states and the FCT, and another 109 billion to 20 states and the FCT. Uh, the numbers keep changing because, as we said, this is conditional. Unless states pay their own counterpart funding, they don't get anything. So the disbursement over the four-year period totaled 350 billion. That's against the 360 over six years before. Well, Nigeria has joined the rest of the world to celebrate Global Recycling Day 2019 in its second year. The initiative is aimed at ensuring leaders, businesses and individuals use the 18th of March as a day to pledge to becoming better recyclers, lower waste and reduce, reuse and recycle more waste that they produce. Adesha Waudushaga now reports. With a movement dedicated to celebrating the importance of recycling and to make the world think resource and not waste, Nigeria has joined the rest of the world to celebrate the Global Recycling Day. The celebration is aimed at recognizing the importance recycling plays in the preservation of primary resources, lowering global carbon emissions, securing the future of the planet as well as cashing the trash. This young and growing club, You Recycle, founded by two young girls almost a year ago, is organizing this event to train young minds on waste management. The need for us to um, solve the issues we face in the environment in regards to waste, which is getting really um, severe day by day, made me to look into made me to look into this recycling as a solution. Recycling serves as a solution to this major problem. In a place like Lagos, where we have lots of waste generated in a day, recycling helps us to 
curb this issue. But however, there's a little, we need more awareness about recycling. Hence, I started the Recycle Initiative to educate young children about the value of recycling and create programs to make recycling of waste more efficient and pervasive in Nigerian schools and communities. My interest in adding the little thing I have into the Sustainable Development Goals. So they have up to 17 goals and I believe I knew I could work with something and I thank God I met Shay because I had we had the same vision to do something and it really worked out because with the help of our mentors and meeting people to teach us more and educate us more about the SDG goals we were able to achieve what you recycle really is now. We, start, we started in August last year, that was just the planning phase, but we started this year, exactly that's on the January, in January 23rd, for our first workshop at Queen's College. So this is like the Global Recycling Day, we just want to speak to people about what recycling is, let them know what recycle, how you can upcycle, and that's why we have lots of activities here, like the Upcycle Fashion Show, Add context and many more. Waste management in Nigeria, particularly estates like Lagos, cannot be overemphasized. Agencies like the Lagos State Waste Management Authority, LOMA, have also put in place several measures in promoting the recycling of waste materials, reusable as raw materials or finished product. Government, uh, for example, LOMA, which is a uh, government agency that regulates activities related to solid waste management, is trying to encourage students by set, uh, inaugurating recycling clubs in schools and also supporting people that set up recycling clubs in school. That's why Loma is partnering with You Recycled, the organizer of this program. So and another thing is Loma supports schools with beans as well, such that when the waste is sorted from each, each classroom, the waste goes to the bigger bin, which is also Loma provide beans. Recycling of waste product is oftentimes limited to production of same product or byproduct. But these kids are taking recycling to another level with an appearance that wows the crowd. Polythene bags, plastic bottles and plastic straws are recycled to make runway gowns, neck pieces and even earrings. Well, um, as of last year, we had, we normally hold a program every year. And as of last year, we were, we were working in line with the World Environment Day theme. And that was Beat Plastic Pollution 2018. Um, so, with a group of students, I put the students together, we felt that, okay, during our program we wanted to have a showcase of what we could do with some of this plastic rather than discard them. So we created, um, we came up with the different fashion, clo different clothing lines and said, okay, let's, let's work with them, let's use these different waste products, plastic waste products, and do something creative that people would appreciate. And um, we decided to go on with this. We did different, we did different types. We used the plastic we could, and the student actually were the, were the brain behind getting this plastic. So we, we observed shop right bags were almost everywhere in in, the, in that axis over there in Lekki axis. So we felt that why not? Since it is, but it's not just to do this. We wanted to also send a message that you see the issue of plastic is a is a big problem. All right. I know we can we have many other reusable options, but why we choose because we feel that. Okay, maybe it's, 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 it's easier or so, but it's actually costing us. And the students also know that. So it was the reason behind why they decided to take this and take it forward. The saying, catch them young, is the best way to describe this 11-year-old president and founder of the Echo Kids Academy. She explains how she founded this club three years ago. I educated the kids in Golden Heights International School. That was my old school on how to keep the environment clean, upcycling, recycling, afforestation, which means planting of trees. And I discouraged them on deforestation, which means cutting down trees. What I'm actually planning to do is go to different countries and you know check out on their environmental schools so I can learn from it. And when I come back to Nigeria, I can actually start Echo Kids Academy and present it to everyone. And you know, Echo Kids Academy is going to be a really great school. It's going to be, it's going to entertain and educate kids on how to keep the environment clean and a lot more. Thank you. Sure. An initiative that began in 2018. The theme for the Global Recycling Day 2019 is focused on recycling into the future and is centered on the power of youth education and innovation in ensuring a brighter future across the globe.
Adeshawa Odushoga, TV360 Nigeria. Well, news now will continue in just a moment. We'll bring you news from the world of business. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, let's now talk business with Oni Adekunle, who is standing by with details. Hello, Oni. Hi, Fidelia. What do you have for us today? More reactions have continued to trail the decision of the Central Bank of Nigeria to ban Forex to importers of textile and other clothing materials. In a chat with TV360, the group general manager of HIC Enterprise speaks on some of the challenges faced by textile producers in the country and how the ban can affect the industry. The input that the smugglers that are bringing in textile, they are bringing it in because the cost of production over there are cheaper. Not only because it's cheaper, the cost is so minimal, unlike here. You pay, look at the cost at the port now. For you to bring in raw material to the country, it's air. You are going to pay a lot of demorage. You are going to waste a lot of time. Sometimes you have no choice than to ask your worker to stay at home. Sometimes you, if you don't want to lose your worker, you ask them to go to up to 2020 leave. Like here now, we have, uh, we, we have sent our workers up to 2020, year 2020 leave. Because we don't want to lose them. It takes money to train them. So this is what is disturbing other investors from coming in. Cost of production is very high. What will government do? This government has tried, but unfortunately what we experience, I, I, the, the textile, they've given textile $3.85. They say plus, they say and manufacturing industry. But we don't understand where we are going now because the way manufacturing industry that they put, we don't, they, they, none of the franchises are ready to even obey. Well, we'll now bring you up to date with stock market report right after this. The bearish sentiments which cost investors a total of 291.5 billion naira last week at the Nigerian equities market has continued this week. At the start of fresh trading week today, profit taking and selling pressure further dragged the all share index down to depreciate by 0.06% with the market cap standing at 11.607 trillion naira. The top four gainers for the day were Dangote Flower PLC, UBA, Wapco, and Cavatin Offshore Support Group PLC. And the losers were spread across the services, industrial, financial services, and banking sectors. See Keja Hotel PLC, Cutex, UBN, and NEM Insurance PLC all recorded decline in their share prices. It was also a day of deficits on the general transactions table. Volume of shares traded today closed at 205.725 million, worth 1.925 billion naira in 3,821 deals. This value translates to over 2 billion naira decline when compared to the 3.32 billion naira which we saw at the last trading session on Friday. On the global level, we see that um, London markets clung to their, um, their modest gains up today by 0.98%. And also for the Dow, it's 0.05% up. Although we see that damages caused by struggling stocks of Boeing is, is actually far from over. Investors continue to exercise doubt, even as reports say federal prosecutors and transportation department officials are probing the development of um, Boeing 737 MAX jetliners. That, that's all we can see for Dow Jones. Also for Nikkei, Apple's increasing mainland Chinese and Hong Kong based suppliers did it for Nikkei stocks today causing the share average to rise by 0.62 percent that's all on stock market review today it's back to you Fidelia 
Well, thank you so much, Oinkan, for that uh, beautiful review of the stock market. Well, to the foreign scene, a cyclone that ripped across Mozambique and Zimbabwe has killed at least 162 people with scores more missing. Cyclone Ida tore into the center of Mozambique on Thursday night before barreling onto neighboring Zimbabwe, bringing flash floods and ferocious winds and washing away roads and houses. Authorities say 90% of the city of some 530,000 people and its surrounding area had been damaged or destroyed. At least 150 more are missing in Zimbabwe, many of them believed to be government workers whose housing complex was engulfed by floods. The Nigeria Football Federation NFF has confirmed 4 p.m. kickoff for all three matches coming up at Stephen Keshi International Stadium Masaba in the build-up to the international break. Two of the upcoming matches will involve the senior national team Super Eagles, while the third will be for the under-23 Olympic Eagles. A statement by NFF's media department affirmed that the Eagles will play Seychelles this Friday in their last match of the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers before again lining out at the same venue on Tuesday against Egypt in an international friendly boat starting at 4 p.m. Also, at same venue and time, 24 hours before the Nigeria-Egypt friendly, the Olympic Eagles will do battle against Libya in the reverse fixture of their 2019 Africa Under-23 Cup of Nations qualifier, the first leg of which will hold this Wednesday in Baghdad, Tunisia. Well, that's it on News Now. Thank you so much for watching. I am Fidelia Aguncha. Bye for now.